engaging in Ferguson as part of the global collapse of the America of, of, of the empire. For Ferguson has to be situated within the framework of a global collapse of the uh, economy, it is very much like Tunisia that begins with an act of disrespect. That you left our son in the street for four and a half hours. And when we responded, we responded with tear gas and tanks and character assassinations. But a new generation of leadership has emerged. Oh, yeah. And it makes me happy. And so for you young people in the room, you know, people talk a lot of trash about millennials. But you what we've been waiting on. <laughs> and that whether it be the young people who have been organizing against nuclear weapons in Japan or the young people who are throwing stones in Palestine, or it's the young people who throw back tear gas in Ferguson, a new generation of leadership has emerged, but oftentimes we ignore this new generation of leadership through nostalgia. And Slavo Zizek reminds us that nostalgia is a form of mourning. Because the present is unbearable and the future is unforeseeable. But a new generation of leadership has emerged. And those of us who are a little more seasoned, part of our role and responsibility is to give access and to give resources, but to get out of the way. That's right. <laughs> so I want to say to our other folks who are in my tradition, we would call them seasoned saints. That your time is up. <laughs> get out of these young people's way. <laughs> and the way in which you get out of their way is acknowledging the realities, as our dear brother has already mentioned to us, that we must be able to do things differently. And in addition to the lobbying, in addition to holding it, politicians accountable, what we're seeing in the global resistance throughout the world is that we must be willing to take to the street. Yeah. And by taking to the street, that means we must be willing to put our bodies on the line, not only simply for our issue, but we're willing to put our bodies on the line when they kill a black baby and leave him in the street for four and a half hours. Will you show up? Will you show up when they kill a trans gendered person and mutilate their bodies and cut them up in parts, will you show up for them? Because that kind of consistency about the ways in which people's lives are impacted every day, when you show up for them, then they'll show up at your anti-nuclear rally. Wow. Because in solidarity, there must be reciprocity. My grandmama would say it like this, baby, when folks are catching hell, you ought to show up. That's right. And so that the task before the peace movement, and the, past before, the task before the anti-nuclear movement, is how will you be present in the lives of everyday people when Native Americans are being trashed on their reservations? Will you show up for them? Will you show up for people who don't matter? And will you show up for people who don't matter you're rejecting the logic of the empire predicated on xenophobia, militarism, and materialism. And then lastly, let me just say this, that nonviolence and peace without ideology is vacuous. That oftentimes we want to talk about peace in a peaceful world, but we don't talk about justice. And there can be no peace where there is no justice. So part of understanding what peacemaking looks like means that you're willing to raise a little hell. You're willing to go to jail for some folks who don't look like you. And you're willing to understand that though these young people, whether they be in Tokyo, or Ferguson, Missouri, they may not do it the way that you used to it being done. But they're nonetheless your children, and you have a moral and ethical obligation to show up for them. And if you're willing to do that, we might not burn this damn thing down. Bless you.